Welcome to a lesson on points, lines, and planes. The goals of the video are to define points, lines, and planes, and also to understand some basic geometric postulates. A point is an exact location in space. They are shown as dots on a plane in two dimensions, or a dot in space for three dimensions. And they are labeled with capital letters to distinguish between different points. However, a point does not take up any space. So if we were to plot points in two dimensions, we often plot them on the coordinate plane as we see here. So if we had four points, we could label them capital A, capital B, capital C, and capital D in no specific order. Now if we plot points in three dimensions, we would have three sets of axes. And to give it a three-dimensional perspective, we often construct a box to represent where that point is in space. So if we had a point here, let's call it point E, this box is supposed to give it a three-dimensional perspective. And I have another video on how to plot points in 3D. And it can sometimes be challenging to give something a three-dimensional perspective on a flat screen. Let's take a look at a Wolfram demonstration showing points in space. So here we see several points plotted in space. And as they move, you get a better feel for what it's like to see points in space. And we can also increase the number of points plotted. Now let's talk about lines. A line is a geometric figure that consists of an infinite number of points lined up straight that extend in both directions forever, as we see pictured here. Notice the arrows on the end indicate it extends forever. Here's a line graphed in three dimensions to help you get a better feel for a line and how it extends in both directions forever. And a line can be identified two ways. One way is by a lowercase letter. The other way is by using two points that the line passes through. So if this was point M and this was point N, we can identify this line as line MN. And we put a little line above the two capital letters. If we introduce another point on this line, let's say O, we could call this line MO or line ON and so on. So there's more than two points labeled on a line. There are several ways to label the line using this notation here. The alternative method is to identify the line by one lowercase letter. So for example, I label this with a lowercase l. I can call this line L. A couple more things to mention about a line. There's exactly one line through two points. So if we consider the points M and O, there's only one line passing through those two points, and that's the one pictured here. There are no other lines that will also pass through those two points. Next, all the points on the same line are called collinear. So points M, O, and N are all collinear because they're all on the same line. However, if we introduce another point that's not on the line, let's say this point here, point P, now all four of these points are not on the same line. And a set of points not on the same line are called non-collinear. Now when we graph two lines at the same time in two dimensions, we either have something called parallel lines or intersecting lines. Parallel lines never touch each other, as we see pictured here on the left. And intersecting lines do touch each other at some point. So for these two lines, they're intersecting and we see the point of intersection. And these two lines, even though we don't see where the point of intersection would be because it would be off the screen, we can tell they will intersect at some point. So if we call this line A and this line B, the way we identify the two lines are parallel is we say that A is parallel, that's the parallel symbol, to line B. And when we have two intersecting lines, the intersection of the two lines will only be one point. So for these two lines, this would be our point of intersection, and it's the only point of intersection.
Related to a line is a line segment. And a line segment is a part of a line with two endpoints, so it doesn't extend in both directions. You can also think of a line segment as a line that starts and stops at two endpoints. So a line would have an infinite length, and a segment would have a finite length. So if this endpoint is A and this endpoint is B, we can call this segment AB, and the notation used is capital A, capital B, with a segment above the A and the B. Next we have a ray. A ray is a part of a line with one endpoint that extends in one direction forever. So looking at this ray, notice that this would be the endpoint, and there's an arrow on this side to show that it extends in this direction forever. Let's go ahead and make this a little bit larger. So if this is point C, and then we call this point here point D, this would be ray CD, and the order of the points is important when it comes to the notation. This is ray CD, meaning it starts at point C, and then it passes through D and continues forever. The last topic I want to talk about is a plane. A plane is a flat two-dimensional surface, and a plane can be identified by three points in the plane or by one capital letter. So if we have points A, B, and C in the plane, we can identify this as plane ABC, or if we label this plane with one capital P, we can just call this plane P. Let's take a look at a plane in space to give this a better perspective. Here we see a blue plane in space. A couple more things to mention about a plane. There's exactly one plane through three points. So just like there's only one line through two points, there's only one plane through three points. And then if two planes intersect, they will intersect in a line. Now it's kind of hard to see here, so let's go ahead and take a look at this on some software. Here we have a yellow and blue plane, and you can see the intersection of these two planes is the red line. So if two planes are not parallel, they will intersect, and they will intersect in a line. One thing that I didn't mention before, if we have a single plane, there would be an infinite number of lines in a plane. And then lastly, coplanar points are in one plane. So in this graph here, points A, B, and C are coplanar, and non-coplanar points are not in one plane. So if we take a look at these four points, points D, E, F, and G are non-coplanar, because the point G is not in the purple plane. That's going to do it for this first video. Hope you found it helpful and thank you for watching.